Hey y'all, I'm Rebecca Mezoff. I thought I would do a spontaneous and quick Facebook Live this afternoon just to talk about yarn management tools. I've had a lot of questions lately in my online classes about I don't know how to make the yarn into balls and skeins and stuff and so I thought I would review that quickly and um, give all of you on Facebook the benefit of seeing that. I um, A lot of times when a skein um, you might need it to be in a skein or in a ball or it may come in a cone and you need it to be in one of those other forms. So um, there's a couple different tools you can use to make that happen and I'm just going to show you what they are really quickly. I'm in my yarn room in my basement. I call it my yarn management bunker. Sometimes it's also called the guest room. Um, anyway, let me show you quickly some simple tools and then I'll show you the tools I use just because I like them. Um, the first thing you may need is a Nitty Knotty. So yarn often comes like this, especially if you're a knitter, it'll come in a skein. This is called a skein. It's um, a hank that's been rolled up. And if you ever wanted to know how to make a skein, you take your hank and you twist it. This is how they do it. And then put the ends together and you'll have a sweet little skein. Mostly what we want to do though is um, make this skein into a ball so that we can use it. Um, balls of course look like this and yarn also often comes in cones. So we need those three different forms at various points for various reasons. To make a skein, if for example you're buying yarn on the cone, and I use Harrisville Highland a lot um, for weaving, and I buy it on the cone because it's cheaper. but this yarn, when bought on the cone, made by Harrisville Designs, has machine oil in it and I want it to be scoured. If you're weaving with it, it's fine. You can use it as it is if you're going to wash the final product, but um, I don't want to wash my tapestry, so I want to scour the yarn before I start weaving with it, which means I need it to be in a skein. So a Nitty Knotty is a really simple tool. There are instructions online. You can make them out of PVC or wood. Um, this is an old wooden one I've had for a long time, and all you do to make the skein is, and this is going to fall off the table, is wrap it in this pattern, and if you buy one of these it should come with instructions, and that makes um, a skein that's a yard or more long. So you would just keep doing this to get as much yarn as you want, and then we're going to make um, figure eight ties. Once you have a skein made, you really do need to tie it well, especially if you're going to be, and this is usually why you would be making a skein, because you're going to be using it either to dye or you need to scour it before you can use it. So, let me show you. This is, let's see if you can see this. My apologies for the low-tech video equipment here. So this is my crazy monkey skein winder, and um, this is my new Nitty Knotty, which I love, and I will show you it works like this with a motor. It's very exciting if you're winding a lot of skeins. However, you don't need one of these. You can do this with um, just that plain Nitty Knotty. But I want to show you how to tie a figure eight skein. It's a very important skill. So you're going to take... Um, your skein, and this could be on the Nitty Knotty or on a skein winder, and divide the part you're going to tie into, into halves. Take your tie, and I usually use the same yarn that I'm using here, unless it's thin, and then I'll use a thicker one. In this case, I'm going to use a yellow yarn so you can see it. I'm going to wind the yarn between the two halves, around, back between, and out, and then I tie the end. So you can see why it's called the figure eight tie. I've crossed that tie in the center here and made a figure eight. That helps keep the yarn from getting tangled. So one more time, divide that in half, pull the yarn through around the other side so that it crosses in the middle, and then I just tie an overhand knot. Now if you're only scouring, you can tie the knot pretty close, it can be tight. But this yarn I'm going to be dyeing, and so I need this to be loose so it doesn't create a resist in the yarn. If it's too tight, there'll be a spot where the yarn is white, where that the dye doesn't get to. Okay, let me show you some other of my 
tools here. So that's how to make a figure eight tie. Fairly important. Um, so you can make um, the skeins on either a skein winder like that. They also make skein winders that are simpler that you just crank by hand or on a nitty knotty. You, can't, you don't want to make skeins on an umbrella swift, which is this, because it collapses. It won't make a good skein and you will have trouble unwinding the skein later. The umbrella swift is for taking a skein and making it into a ball. So here's one tip. Um, I had a student this morning online ask me about, she said she had a lot of trouble with skeins. They're always tangled and she doesn't know how to manage them. So here are a couple tips about skein management. If you get your skein from the knitting store, it might not even be tied very often, which can cause trouble. So be careful when you open those skeins. What you wanna do is look for a tie and follow that tie around and make sure that there are no um, pieces of yarn that are folded the wrong way. For example, if I saw this tie like this, this is, this is the problem right here. I can see that there's a piece of yarn that's folded backwards. I need to pull that so that everything coming out of each side of that tie is going in opposite directions. Nothing is folded over and looped. That is part of what gives you trouble when you're trying to unwind skeins, is that part of the yarn is folded the wrong direction. Once you've checked your ties and made sure that you have control of the loop of yarn, Here's your major tip. Put your hands through it and snap it. Pretty hard, unless you have a really fragile yarn. Um, that snapping will line up all of those bits of yarn and it will unwind much better for you. So you put it on your umbrella swift and I'm going to make this skein into a ball. Put it on my umbrella swift, get the swift a little bit taut. Then I'm gonna cut the ties and we will wind it into a ball. Make sure you don't cut your yarn when you're cutting the ties, the yarn that you're going to use. Okay, and the last tie is where, um, this one I actually just looped. The last tie is where I have done that figure eight. So I'm looking for the point where they're crossing, pulling that out and using one of those tails to make my ball. So from here, I want to wind this into a ball so I can use it for weaving. I want it to look something like this. This is the tool that most of you will use. This is just a plain plastic ball winder. I've used ones by Royal and this particular one, I'm not sure who made it. Um, it looks like it might have been made somewhere in Japan. Um, the idea being it clamps to a table and you can make these center pull balls quite easily. I happen to have a, um, I'm going to show you here, this is, my, this is my new ball winder setup. This is a Nancy's Knit Knacks ball winder and this is a um, yarn counter so that I can count how many yards, which is kind of important for some of the things I do. I need to know how many yards I'm weaving. So let me just show you. There's the ball winder and the Nancy's Knit Max ball winder actually comes also without the power base, but because I wind probably thousands of balls every year, um, I love the power base. So, hang on. Okay. So the ball winder's doing the job and there's the umbrella swift unwinding. If you were using one of these, you would be cranking yourself and making the ball the same way. Okay. Those are, <laughs> those are your yarn management tools. Um, Nitty Naughty, which I put down, Nitty Naughty for winding skeins, Umbrella Swift for unwinding the skeins to get them into a ball on a ball winder. 
If you'd like more um, information about tapestry weaving or all things yarn, check out my website at tapestryweaving.com. Thanks, y'all. If you have questions, just put them below.